uh, like to open the meeting for the Rockland Board of Health uh, on, D on uh, Tuesday, September 27th, 2022 at 6.02 p.m. Um, we have here today a new member, uh, Christina Russo. Um, Michelle Kennedy could not be with us tonight. Um, myself, Chair Christine Stewart. And we have Delshawn uh, Flip, who is a health agent. Amy Phipps, who is our uh, Senior Administrative Assistant. Um, and we'd like to uh, get started by doing signatures. So um, this is for uh, Green Mattress. Just Bill. Sorry. Um, okay. Yep. Green Mattress Recycling. I didn't bring my glasses with me. That's really bad. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. And that's the, for disposal of oh, mattresses. Shoot. Oh, does it have to be black? It doesn't have to be, but. <laughs> yeah, I prefer not to use purple. <laughs> See my purple pen. Okay, so that's bills. Um, and then next we have the trash abatements. Um, so you also, Christina, in your packet, you will have a copy of these. Okay. okay. So, but this is the original that we have to sign. Um, I did take a look at these uh, beforehand, so everything looked okay. I didn't have any specific questions, but if you have and then the questions, please feel it. free to ask mm -hmm. because yeah, I'm so sorry. The backup is with it, so you mm -hmm. can tell that there's been no water consumption. It's how we base it. Um, another reason if somebody goes away, there's snowbirds or whatever, they have to That's provide us with um, their mailing change of mailing address. That way there we know that the property's vacant and nobody's using and putting trash out. So they get abated for the quarter. Um, and so, yeah, so this would be one quarter and then this would be the quarter with um, interest applied. <coughs> For two family vacant. So these all look okay. This one is a five family, so yeah. Okay. And then Michelle come and sign. Oh, so uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then next we have a, um, oops, I'm sorry, I need to um, approve the abatements. So I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the abatements for September 2021. And then just say motion to abate. Motion to approve. To approve. Okay, all the, uh, a second. And all those in favor? Okay, <coughs> it's all set. And then next we have a food permit. <coughs> Thank you. Bless you. <clears throat> that is for a one-day event for the um, fall festival. Um, last minute person jumping in. Okay. Is this a food truck? It's a food cart. Food cart, okay. So we check off the liability insurance. So we, we always want to look here at the dates to make sure this is updated. And you just check. So we'll go over all this too. Mm -hmm. we'll go over for the Rockland Lions. So this is their insurance. Yeah. Lions Club. Okay. They're supposed to provide a, a menu, so that's all set. <laughs> <laughs> nice like menu. <laughs> yes, it's <laughs> hand, handwritten menu. Um, allergen awareness and serve safe. Mm -hmm. I think they have food handler and that. Yep, food handler. Yeah, and that's that's enough because they're not dealing with 
um, anything that's time temperature control. Okay. All right, perfect. And I just like to make sure that this is checked. This is properly checked. Mm -hmm. One day, so that's for 10 1. Okay, perfect. Next, we have the minutes for August 30th. the August 30th so meeting, which I did take a look at. You took a look at it? Yes. Oh. Christina, um, by Christina. Any chance, did you review the meeting like did, on WRPS? She was here. She was last here. Meeting she was here at the last meeting. Oh, she was meeting. here. Oh, so she can. Okay. Yeah. There's just no spot for her, but I, we can just, I can just add it in. Yeah. That's... Does that? Doug, can I ask you a question? Yep. So the meeting August 30th, Christina wasn't sworn in at that time? She was at the meeting? Right. She so wasn't there as a member. So there's a thing that's Need called to... the rule of necessity. Okay. So you're sworn in now and you're on the board now. And even if you weren't at a meeting, even though you did observe it, you can vote on it because you need to get a quorum to vote. So. It's okay for you to vote on it, I guess is what I'm saying. Okay. Because okay. There's a thing called the rule in the Senate. So, yeah, you're good. Okay. Um, so I did, did you get a chance to take a look at this before? Uh -huh. Yeah, I oh. looked at everything. Okay, did you have any questions about it? About no. no. Okay. Um, so I'm going to sign this, and we'll just add your name uh -huh. to the bottom. I'm going to put a fancy little line, straight as I can, which is not good. That was so impressive. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the me meeting, <clears throat> excuse me, meeting minutes for August 30th, 2022. Good, and I second that. Oh, and so That's you want to just um, say a motion, motion to, approve. to approve. And then um, I second, and then all those in favor. Hi. That's us. That's us. <laughs> okay. We're it. Okay, so that's all set. Okay. All right. Um, so we're on to new business. So first, I would just like to welcome Christina. <laughs> um, and uh, Christina just joined our board last week. Um, so welcome to the board as a new member, Thank Christina you. Russo. Um, she will be, uh, I don't know, how do, would he call them, as a, a member of the board until um, our next election. So, um, welcome. Thank you. Welcome. I'm excited. Okay. And next we have the lien penalty increase. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, every year we um, lien trash accounts that do not pay their trash throughout the year. Um, it could be financial reasons, it could be for tax reasons, whatever the reason is. At least anywhere from 300 to 350 people every year that um, goes to lean. Um, since I, 15, 16 years that I've been involved in the lien process, it is, they've never increased the fee. The fee, uh, the penalty fee is only $10. Um, I don't, I just want to see if the board would want to increase that $10 uh, penalty fee. For years, the sewer and water department and I have always been talking about it. And then COVID happened and then nobody really thought about it anymore. And then it's really time consuming. It really is time consuming. Um, 
and I just think that ten dollars isn't an incentive to make people pay as a penalty. And the pr and the uh, lien is for how long of a time period? It depends. If you didn't pay your trash from July first, twenty twenty one, to June thirtieth, twenty twenty two, it. Roughly, I actually brought a couple. Um, so in 2020, fiscal year 20, we um, put a lien of $115,000. Um, that's how much it is. And that really hurts when we're trying to make payments on the trash because the trash fees are self-supporting and we're not getting that money in timely. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if an increase would push that along or not, but um, I know that there's been talk of increasing the $10 penalty fee. That $10 penalty fee turns around and goes to the general fund. Right. So what I'm curious about is what rate, so these people aren't paying, at what rate do they then begin to pay or pay? They don't. So what happens is that balance, so let's just say, you know, Donald Duck owes $500 because he didn't pay any of his trash bills. Right. That $500 <coughs> gets placed as a special assessment on his real estate bill, and it gets paid that way. Okay. But that doesn't happen until the following fiscal year. Right. And so um, the penalty is, does that go to them and then in the hopes that they would send that check to us or does that go on that? No, nope. so the them? penalty would go to the general fund. Mm -hmm. If you got it. We, yeah, we, get, we yeah. would get it because that also would be assessed on the real estate. Oh, okay. Yep. So do we get it upon sale of the prop, like if the property is sold, is that when we get it? Well, if they're in tax title and they're not paying, yes. Okay. But if they are paying, their most people, their mortgage company pays their real estate bills anyway, so they'll get that and they'll just be out of their escrow is what happens. Okay. Right? So, and it's a $10 fee for for the for the year or yeah. is it ten dollar fee per quarter? No, ten dollar fee for the year. Okay. Which isn't that much, I don't think, but I don't I mean it isn't that much unless obviously maybe people don't have that have the, much have to, the money, to, right. To pay, you know, so right. it does, I think the idea like is leading somebody yeah. out where right. they already are. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't know the reason, right? So some it could be a financial and it could be just a real estate. People want to take think that they can take that on their taxes. They shouldn't, but they do, because then it looks like they paid more in their real estate taxes, because now it's assessed on their real estate. Hmm. That's interesting. So is that actually separate from? Is it separated out from the taxes? Mm -hmm. It is. Yep, it's okay. a separate line item. Okay. Both of them are. It'll say. Um, the lien amount and then the penalty amount. And I don't know, I think that if the board feels the, the need to increase it, then I think water and sewer would do the same thing for us. So now that we have to realize that, you know, Donald Duck isn't paying just his trash, but he's also not paying his water and sewer, he would also get a penalty of $100 from water or for sewer, whatever the, I just made that up, I'm sorry, I don't, Yeah. I didn't mean to say that's what it's going to be. Right, But I understand what you're saying. Now his penalty is going to be $300, that will be assessed. That's if water and sewer yeah. follow suit. Yeah. I'm curious, so are we sending out notices for yes. folks when, and mm -hmm. that's what I'm, yeah, so, so then it's probably more than the $10, the notices printing, that's what I'm looking is like, is it, you know, fair, is it cost effect, you know, to increase and, you know, so. Um, right. So that makes sense. If we're yeah. sending out notices, how often are we sending out notices? We only send out, so typically we do send out notices 
well, I shouldn't say that. When I first started working in the Board of Health, I was like, oh my God, because I was so eager and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I sent out the first reminder, it, the second reminder, it didn't matter how many reminders because then the following year I only sent out one reminder. Mm -hmm. And it's still, it's really like the same people. Yeah, but it's kind of like due diligence. You do it anyways. Do you know, like yes. we did it, we told you, we, we did do it, it whatever, right. and twice a year, every quarter, and whatever now that I, is. And it's expensive, right, for the postage and like you said, the paper and everything else. But what, what is great is that I have the ability to reach out to Doug. I, the beginning of this week, um, we posted it on social media and on WRPS and the website that we're process we're going to start processing the liens. Notices will go out Thursday at the l Friday at the latest, but they will go out this week. And it's also included in their next tax bill. For, I mean, next um, trash bill, correct? Yes. The so they'll see. They know it because they get their trash bills. So quarterly they would see it, but yes. they would also see it when we send out a reminder. Yep. Um, and what was it? I just lost my train of thought. Oh my God, I hate when I do that. All right, but yeah. Um, do we have any idea what liens are in for other for like other towns or anything, any of that kind of information. Okay, I was just no. curious. I know a lot of times we get, yeah, you know, sometimes we have some of that information yeah. to give us kind of a guideline as Most to what towns, other towns are doing. And and typically, yes, but yeah, a lot of towns, their trash is in their real estate taxes. Mm -hmm. So it's all lumped in. Okay. Like Hanover doesn't have a trash bill because everybody goes to the transfer station. Right. Abington, theirs is incorporated in their um, real estate bills. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have anything else you want to no. add? Or and so what amount were you thinking? Um, I, to be honest, was with you, I was thinking $100, but after speaking with Sewer, Robin was like, Deli, you're really hitting the residents, mm -hmm. right? So, and so you got to think of that. So then I went, okay, $25. Then it's $75 penalty if it's all three utilities, which is not that devastating, but it is an increase. Right. Okay. Did you have something, sir? Yeah, I had a question. <clears throat> My name is John Ward. I live at 22 Nevin Circle. I'd like to ask the health inspector to send out, to attach a lien just for one. What do you think it costs? I mean, in time, material, um, what, what's it cost you? For, if you're saying like one, yeah. if I was just doing one, you have to think, all right, so it's the ink, it's the paper, it's the envelope, the time. Postage, postage, the time. The time. The time. And it's very time consuming because we've been trying to keep up on it. Mm -hmm. So once a week we print a report and make sure that anybody that has already paid comes right off of that report. So just to set it up, you're talking $25? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any thoughts? No, I think that, right, $25 seems like a fair fee. I, I mean, it's pretty so. low. It but is. But I am curious, you know, are these elderly people? Are they unemployed? They're hit by COVID? You will, yeah, knows? so it's, it's a, it's. People that don't believe in the system. It's really, I know. <laughs> it really is, like, you would be able to tell, like, most elderly people, they're on a fixed income, and they pay, mm -hmm. right? They will pay, and yeah. they would do without. So, um, and you know, we could always, the board, we could always request if somebody's in a financial situation that, That's they, true. that they don't, if they could ask and the board can approve it or not. But it's really a time consuming thing. I'd rather people just pay their bills so that this isn't something else. But 
Yeah, I guess on, on if you were sending it to them, you could put, if this is a hardship, please contact us. Yeah. You know, or right. something like that. Yeah. And then here, mm -hmm. and then obviously proof that yeah. that is a hardship. And yes. Uh, on the fifty dollar, I mean twenty five. Uh, look at me. I'm just <laughs> whatever that number is going to be. You mean be. that three hundred and fifty dollar penalty? <laughs> yeah. So all right. So yeah. whatever you guys decide, I uh, I will bring it back to the water and department and sewer department. Um, I'm not sure if they'll follow suit, but. Um. Yeah. I mean, I think we definitely need to say that you know, if there's. A hardship in any way to to contact us make sure that that's in there um, because we obviously would want to you know the hardship take a look would at only that be on the penalty it can't be on the payment the trash payment right right yeah. I right. understand yeah. that yeah. All right. I yeah. understand that and for that even if they called in then you could say why don't you call them and you can come up with a payment plan with yes them or, you know how yeah it is so um, or maybe they're just going to be like, we're not paying this, mm -hmm. and we're not paying that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, and there are some people, there are some people that do not use the trash service, and they tell me, and, and I tell them that they're not supposed to be hauling trash because they'll take their one little bag and bring it to their office. I'm like, well, you can't do that. So, um... But they're still paying the trash bill. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they still have to pay the trash bill. Okay, um, so you're feeling twenty five. Yeah. Seems fair and reasonable. Yeah, I mean, I, I think a hundred's a little steep. Mm -hmm. um, going from you know a ten dollar fee to a hundred, I think that's a lot. Um, and then you know if we're, I mean, obviously you are aware that water and sewer um, are going to you know, probably follow suit. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that 25 seems reasonable for now. Um, and we can kind of maybe relook at that and see how that goes. Okay. Um, and I, I think that, that that makes sense. Anything else that you want to add before we vote on that? No, I think that okay. covered it. So I want to entertain a motion to um, increase the lien penalty to $25. I second the motion. Okay, so you want the motion, and then um, I second, and then all those in favor? Okay. All right. Okay, thank you. The next thing that we're going to talk about is the uh, Public Health Excellence Grant. And tonight we um, would like to welcome Mike Hugo, who is uh, with the Mass Association of Health Boards, and he is the Director of Policy and Government Relations. Thank Take you. it away, Mike. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's, it's nice to be here again. Thank this you. This is my, I believe, second time here in, in Rockland. Um, but I, I don't know, did you distribute the, okay, but I don't believe that, um, that Ms. Russo, I don't believe you've seen the she, couple of page document. Or yeah, so she, I forward that to them. Oh, you did yeah. get it. Yes. Okay, so, yeah. all right. Yes, Christine has received that. Okay, yes. so, all right, so that's good. So um, maybe if you could just explain a little bit. Sure, and sure. And that's also in your packs, guys. It's yes. It's under the MAJP. I got it. Yeah, and you. I'm not going to make you go through my slides, but I'm going to look at my slides so I, so I hit all the high points okay, for you. Okay, terrific. Okay, so, and, and this will be a little education for you, uh, Christina, also, because uh, something you should be aware of is that in Massachusetts, we have, unlike any other state in the nation, every city and town in Massachusetts has a board of health or has a, an equivalent of a board of health. Some have a health commission. Um, most of the boards are, uh, well, all boards are either three or five members, uh, and uh, they're either elected or appointed. Uh, in, in this town, you're elected, although you've been appointed to fill a vacancy. Um, Boards of Health, up until two years ago, have received zero dollars from the state. It's all, it all comes out of your municipal dollars, uh, which means that your chair of your board has to go every year before the town meeting and beg for money. And if, you're, if your health department is doing a good job, it's very difficult to ask for money because you're invisible. If you're doing, if you're doing the job right, nobody knows 
what you've been doing. It's when someone dies in a restaurant or it's when somebody has a pandemic and everybody has to wear masks or, or get shots that people realize that there is a board of health in their town. So in peacetime, <laughs> not, not, a, not a, a pandemic, it's difficult to advocate for dollars because if you're doing your job right, the town meeting doesn't know why they're giving you money. But the reason they're giving money is that there are 55 statutory uh, obligations that boards of health have, and they include things like, uh, like swimming pool inspections, um, uh, food inspections that you're, you know, that's what people generally think of when they hear about a board of health. Uh, funeral parlor inspections, believe it or not, um, come under boards of health. Um, uh, death certificate, burial permits, location of a cemetery in the town, enforcing nuisance, overseeing pesticide use. Uh, there's 55 of those things that, that, that we actually uh, inspect bathing beaches, we inspect all of the summer camps and towns. Okay. So there's a lot of things that boards of health do. Uh, and up until now, the state's never given a penny directly to boards of health. And I know that your town administrator is here, and you're going to be very happy to hear about this because this is really the first time. Uh, so what's what's uh, what's happened is that there are there's a couple of terms I'm going to throw at you. One is the coalition for local public health, and that the coalition for local public health is my organization, Mass Association of Health Boards, the Mass Public Health Association, which is sort of a lobbying arm for public health. Mass Health Officers Association, which is, you belong to, to it's the health directors, the, the, my organization you belong to, you, you're as board members. Uh, the uh, Mass Environmental Health Association is most of the inspectors, Mass Public Health Nurses Association, uh, the Western Mass Public Health Association, uh, and we, inv we meet every week, or every other week, I'm sorry, by Zoom. And um, we invite the Department of Public Health to attend for about half of our meeting, and then we kick them out and talk about things that they're not supposed to hear about for various statutory reasons um, to avoid any conflicts. So uh, recognizing the fact that, um, that public health is underfunded, uh, back in 2016, uh, there was a special commission put together. And the special commission was put together uh, by the state, uh, is actually put together by the administration with, with the legislature. So there were senators, there were state reps, there were representatives of the Coalition for Local Public Health, uh, there were uh, professors from, from the, the various public health uh, programs around, around our universities, uh, and the Mass, Tax, Max, Mass Taxpayers Foundation, uh, belong to it, the Mass Municipal Association, which really is your, your town manager's organization. They all, they all got together and formed a special commission, and the, the, the report of the special commission was issued in 2019, and if she doesn't have it, I bet, uh, I'll, I, I'll be happy to make sure that you get a copy of it. It's very long. It's, I think, 86 pages long. There's an executive summary that basically says, uh, that, that uh, the most boards of health in Massachusetts are not meeting their statutory requirements. Uh, because there's 351 totally autonomous boards, there's no sharing that goes on between towns, which creates weaknesses in, in various areas. Uh, and you can't, uh, there's not enough staffing and resources given to public health. And we don't have any way of collecting public health data uh, for, for various statistics, which leads to health inequities, which we saw so much of through COVID, where elderly people couldn't get to vaccination sites because they were in Foxborough, uh, and people were coming from, uh, from, from, actually people were going from Barnstable County to Springfield to get their shots because the computer just matched people with the next shot. So COVID kind of ripped the Band-Aid off of everything. So while we're looking at increasing or, or, or increasing the presence of public health and uh, finding ways to modernize public health, we have a pandemic that comes in and says, okay, the gig is up now because now everyone in the public is gonna see how weak public health is in Massachusetts. So because it's funded municipally, 
There are, there are cities and towns in Massachusetts that have $3,000 a year for the Department of Health. And there are cities and towns in Massachusetts that have $10 million. The city of Boston has over 1,000 employees, and all of the hospitals for, in Boston fall under their, uh, all of the public hospitals fall under their, their, their health department. Cambridge, the Cambridge Health Alliance is, is uh, the Cambridge Hospital and their Board of Health and all, everything you see in Cambridge, for instance. So um, what, what was highlighted through COVID and, and through all of this was that the state has never really stepped up to the plate. So the special commission, uh, the members of the special commission and the members of the, of the Coalition for Local Public Health went to the state and said, it's time for you guys to, to come up with something. So uh, th three, three fiscal years ago, uh, we got our first dollars from the state. It was $1.7 million. 14 grants were, were formed. Uh, they were very small. They were about $50,000 a piece to study whether or not, 30 to $50,000 a piece, to study whether or not um, a, some sort of a regional sharing program might work. Now, regionalization is, uh, I call it the R word. I don't, I don't like to say the word regionalization, and I don't like to say the word health district, because uh, regionalization attempts in the past have failed miserably because they've been underfunded and then the state stopped funding after people were hired, sticking cities and towns with payroll that they didn't know what to do with because the, the state wasn't paying for these regional efforts anymore. Uh, boards of health had to give up their ability, in many cases, to pass regulations. And there may be something that affects your town. Perfect example right now is going on not too far from here in Plymouth where the, the, uh, the, 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 the people who own the power station are talking about dumping uh, the, the radioactive wastewater into the bay uh, to get rid of it because they don't know what else to do with it. Now, the Atomic Energy Commission from the federal government, the uh, state attorney general's office, the State Department of Public Health, the State Department of Environmental Protection, they don't know what to do about it because there's, there's really, it's kind of a loophole in the statutes and the company could actually go ahead and dump that water if they wanted to. So it comes down to a small little group of people, the Board of Health for the town of Plymouth can do things that the NRC, the federal government, the state government can't do. They can say this would be a nuisance, it would affect our uh, fishing beds, it would affect people's health potentially, and they can actually declare a moratorium, which I think you're going to see happen in that case. So there's all kinds of these other, and I know I'm sort of, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to bring everything together quickly for you. Okay. Um, but so that you, boards of health have powers that other, other agencies in town don't have. You can stop anything under the law that could affect, that you believe as a board could affect people's public health, uh, and that could be everything from declaring a mask mandate, what, like what we just saw recently. Uh, it could be stopping dumping nuclear waste into a bay. It could be if you have an asphalt plant in your town that smells bad and they move the facility closer to the houses uh, that are in the neighborhood because they're trying to do an expansion, the Board of Health can stop that. It could be uh, uh, a chemical company, a chemical transfer company, that you stop dead in its tracks because they're polluting the ground. In Framingham, I served 15 years on the Framingham board, and while I was the chair for eight years, we shut down a chemical transfer plant, which the DEP came and told us, you can't do that. We can't do that. You can't do that. Nobody can do that. You can't, you can't regulate that. It's, it's not within the purview of the Board of Health. Eleven public hearings later, we shut them down. And uh, we showed the DEP that boards of health can do things that even the DEP can't do. Uh, they're looking at it right now with PFAS, which is a, you've, you've, mm -hmm. the board knows about <laughs> PFAS. We'll, uh, we're, we're working with, with the town of Oak Bluffs where they have a high school for the island. Uh, and the high school football field, there's a, a movement to put a turf field where the football, football field is with PFAS in it. The problem is that under that football field is the sole source aquifer for all the drinking water in Martha's Vineyard. Uh, so not a great idea to be putting a PFAS field. So that's another 
moratorium that we're that we're going to be working that we're working on right now to, to, to file. So that was all part of the first 1.7 million dollars to study things like that. What can what can boards of health do to, do to to protect themselves and to to work together? Martha's Vineyard's the best example, and the reason it's the best example is you have six towns. You have six boards of health. You have 18 board of health members. You have six health directors. And you have town managers who say, we're not paying tax, we're not collecting tax money and paying our staff to do stuff in the next door town. You work for this town. You work for this town. That's who you work for. They, they were very siloed with the way that they did things. So the DPH said, let's see if they will take one of these grants, and let's see if it can work there, it can work anywhere. The health directors instantly, on the, on the rumor that this grant was coming, uh, grabbed it very quickly because they all wanted to work together. They understood the public health implications. That was one of the first, of the first 14 grant holders from that one point, actually it was 1.3 million, I'm sorry, it wasn't 1.7. The second year, they decided, all right, they had 14 small groups. There was a group from Western Mass that was working on, uh, on, on making the data collections electronic so that they weren't using paper forms, uh, getting advanced computer systems put in uh, for, for better disease reporting. Uh, uh, there was a Metro West group with, around Framingham that needed public health nursing. Uh, the town of Ashland does, doesn't have a public health nurse at all. Framingham had three at that time. So the idea was Ashland is very important because that's where the state Senate president lives, and she didn't have a public health nurse. So this became somehow very personal uh, because now the Senate president is seeing, hey, my town now has a public health nurse because of this $1.3 million grant program. The second year, we went from $1.3 million to $11.7 million. And the third year, uh, we asked for uh, $13 million, uh, and we got 15 after the Senate came to us and said, you didn't ask us for enough money. And this year, they, we, this for, for fis fiscal year 23, we went back for the same 15 because that, that accomplishes what we need because of the 200 million in ARPA that I'll talk about in a minute that's coming directly to boards of health. <coughs> so this program got off the ground and went from 14 sharing groups. Today there are 50 uh, and uh, uh, there are 310 cities and towns out of the 351 that are within public health sharing groups. And when I say there are 50, and when I say there are 310, I'm actually counting Rockland into that, that number. <coughs> because you're, you're in a group that's in formation right now. You've, the, the, the grant has been approved, and we'll talk about that in a second. <coughs> so what, what, what these grants support is cross-jurisdictional sharing. And uh, the perfect example is, again, Martha's Vineyard. And I'm saying that because uh, <coughs> Not, not because I'm the, the, the shared services coordinator for their grant, but because it's working perfectly. So I'll take a second. Are you all right? <coughs> Don't Do die on me, please. Just hold some water. Do I'll drop you the coffee. <coughs> We Sorry. can't have you die. You just got here. Yeah. Way too soon. You know, this is what's supposed you're to happen. You're very valuable. To remember. Right. Yeah, that's a plague seat you're sitting in. <laughs> Don't be saying that. <laughs> Not inviting you back anytime soon. Yeah, really. <laughs> All right, take your time. Okay, so I'll, I'll, use, I'll use the vineyard as, as the example. We hired, and I'm their shared services coordinator. That's, I think I'd mentioned that. So in, in, you know, in full disclosure, I, I work on that grant because it was a difficult one to form and because it's one of the originals. So what we've done over the two years now that that grant has been, has been active is the first year or so, we didn't hire anybody. We just were trying to figure out what we're gonna do. Uh, but that grant has now hired the only, the only shared tick biologist in Massachusetts. We actually have a full-time tick biologist for the, and it's both islands now instead of just Martha's Vineyard. 
actually three islands. We have Gosnold, which has 13 permanent citizens in it, but they're part of the grant. Uh, so we've hired a tick biologist, we've hired a social service worker, and an inspector. The inspector has become incredibly well trained with various certifications and has already been poached by one of the towns. And, and so we're looking for a new inspector on the islands. Uh, but that's a whole nother story. But what, the, what that grant has accomplished in the, the first employee was hired in November of last year, so not even a year. Uh, we've had, we, we've had a, uh, we spent $20,000 on a uh, anti-racism training for summer camps because there was an incident in one of the summer camps on the island the summer before where uh, three white campers tied a noose around a black camper's neck and tied him to a post. And the camp's response was, you shouldn't do that, it's not nice. And we figured that's not, as a public health issue, that's not the way you handle things like that. So what we did was we used grant money to pull all of the camp directors and counselors into a room before camp began this year and do an anti-racism training. And next year, all of the boards of health on the island will have on their camp inspection form a checkbox that says that we have an anti-racism training program in place before, as part of the inspection process. So if they don't have it, they don't get to open next year. This year it was on the grant, next year it's on them. Uh, we, we have done, we've, we've begun a, an island-wide uh, community health study to determine what the actual rates of addiction are. The rumor is that one in five people on Martha's Vineyard have a substance use or alcohol use disorder uh, and nobody's ever been able to put a, they, they say that, that's one in five, but nobody has the stats. We're doing that with this grant. Uh, we have begun, um, uh, we've uh, worked very hard on improving uh, food security for, there's a huge um, uh, undocumented population on the island because those are the people that are working in the summertime there and they stay on the island in the winter and 180 of them live in cars. We've, we've determined that. Uh, so we're making sure that, we're, that services are getting out to the people who are stressed on the island because they, they, they need to be there for work for the summertime and they have nothing to do in the winter, which brings you to a high drug and alcohol rate. Okay. So we're working on that, uh, on that island. Uh, all of the inspections are up to date. They weren't up to date when we started. Uh, uh, and uh, actually the, the, the inspector has been trained to do uh, Title V work, sewer, uh, uh, I'm sorry, septic and well work. Um, uh, the, the tick biologist has set up not only a, a whole tick remediation program, but uh, you may be aware that they are doing a, a, a pilot study on a vaccine on Martha's Vineyard right now for, for uh, Lyme disease, and that's the result of having our grant in place that we've attracted that study because they now have data that they can rely on, on, on tick bites. Uh, so that's, that's, that's how, that's a success story. There are, so far there, there are no failure stories. Um, the grants are $300,000 a piece per year, three years, and then there's three cycles of that. So it's $2.7 million over nine years is the grant cycle, the whole grant cycle. Uh, Currently, it's a line item that we go to the state legislature for every year. Uh, uh, we have heard from the prospective, the most likely incoming administration uh, that when the new administration takes, takes over uh, on Beacon Hill that this will become a permanent line item. So it won't be, a, it'll be a grant program, but it won't be dependent on, on continued appropriations on an annual basis going with our hat in hand and asking for the legislature. It'll be a, a permanent line item in the DPH budget. Um, and the, the, the goal of it is to expand shared services uh, among, among cities and towns. Uh, and uh, the way that it's set up is that uh, this group would have, uh, and you're gonna have to help me with this, it's, it's, it's Rockland. So we have a host town, which is Marshfield. They are our host town, so Ma Marshfield will get money from the grant, but we have Marshfield, possibly Pembroke, Hanover, 
Norwell, Rockland, and Hanson. Hanson. Oh, wait yep. and Hanson. Hanson. <laughs> Hanson. Yep. Yeah, Gill. Yeah. So, um, and, and so with six? Those, all, yes. Yeah, so with okay. that small group of us, each one of our needs are completely different. Mm -hmm. So Rockland's a special little case where we only have me to do food inspections, housing inspections, Title V, um, and camps and everything. And you do camps everything. Camps and pools, yes. So I do it all, and there's not enough time on the other things that I should be more concentrating on, this grant will help me stay in the office and do more stuff in the office than being out on the field. So we'll get our food inspections done and the town doesn't have to pay. If I am in the middle of something and there's a housing complaint, I can call the Shear Service Coordinator and she will send out the inspector to the to the house that, I, that needs to go to, or the restaurant that needs to go to, or whatever, if I'm busy. If you, and and it, it would increase your nursing capabilities because the group will probably hire a public health nurse that would work with your existing nursing staff and be an adjunct. If you want to do a, yes. uh, if See, you want to yeah. do a, a, a clinic, uh, okay. instead of doing a clinic here or having, uh, who was it that did your clinic this year? It wasn't Walgreens. Yeah, instead of Walgreens doing the clinic, it'll be a public health clinic run by public health nurses in one of the one of the high schools or one of the schools or some community center, and and it'll probably go between maybe it won't go to all six towns, but it'll be it'll be centrally located in maybe two or three clinics or one. This time it'll be here. Next time it'll be Hanover, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then and then um, uh, yeah, and and then and then the real another real issue is you guys have a have a, a pretty significant aging population yes. in your town. And I've done, I've done a little demographic background. Uh, the, what Framingham's, uh, uh, the Metro West group has done is their community service worker is, has attracted other grants over and above this grant to do aging issues. Uh, and one of the things that they do is they actually send a social worker into homes if somebody's had a fall uh, the doctor reports that to the Board of Health, and the Board of Health will send somebody into the home uh, to do a survey. And if, if it might be that when they walk in, there's a there's a, 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 a mat, a doormat, that's not taped down and it's slippery on a the floor, they'll put double stick tape down. They'll look around for, for whatever it is that they need to do in the house, light stuff, not housing renovations, but <laughs> just just to make it safer. Uh, the restaurants in, in the Metro West area, if they see somebody who's 85 years old and who may have a little dementia or something come into the restaurant, and they'll sit there with a menu, and they'll look at that menu for five minutes, and they, they don't take their eyes off it. And that's a, that's a sign to the, to the trained uh, restaurant staff that that person's going to need some help. So the, the, the waitresses are taught and waiters are taught. You go over and you make a little conversation with them and then you say, so what do you feel like eating tonight? You get them off the menu because you're helping them to order. So it's, it's even things that subtle and that's all part of the grant. So, uh, uh, and, and New Bedford, uh, with their grant, they spent, um, they spent $55,000 on their, on their anti-racism training, and, the, and it was aimed at people who worked in the town because the health director felt that there were some issues involving some of the municipal departments in their group, sanitation workers or maybe building inspectors who were a little bit rough around the edges when it came to racial issues. And so they actually had trainings for their, for their municipal staff on how to deal with racial issues, which I thought, I, I attended those, they were amazing, amazing program. So anyway, so, so we have, um, uh, the governance is that each of the boards of health, uh, usually it's the health directors, although there are, board, there are boards of health that don't have any employees in Massachusetts, none. It's just the board members go and do the inspections of all six restaurants in town or whatever. Uh, in that instance, it would probably be the board chair, but it's usually the health directors will meet. In the beginning, it could be as much as once a week. 
uh, and uh, uh, they'll determine what they need to hire and what what they need to target as part of the hiring. And um, all of the salaries are set by that by that group. Um, we don't want we don't want to be in a position where you're you're paying somebody a fortune. Uh, and you're paying somebody in the grant more money than the municipal employees are making in the town because that creates imbalances and it creates flight. It creates an, an opportunity for a town to poach, which we have seen firsthand um, because the, the salary wasn't enough. So, but that's your, your governing group will set the salaries. They'll do the job interviews. Uh, I'll stay with your group all the way through to the point that they hired the first hire is always a shared service coordinator. I'll help the group find one uh, and uh, uh, we will um, be able to to then use the shared services coordinator to help with the other hiring. The state is doing a capacity assessment right now it's underway with the first three round uh, three rounds of the grant. This is a fourth round grant. The first three rounds began a capacity assessment last week. It's a 200-question 200, uh, 200, uh, questionnaire that's designed to really determine what you have, what you don't have, what you need, and what you don't need. And uh, the second phase of that will be a questionnaire that goes, and that's answered by Delshawn. The second one goes to everybody in town who touches public health. That would be members of the board. It would be Delshawn. It would be the assistant. It would be the nurse. If the, if the town manager has uh, signed uh, building services to do some sorts of housing inspections, or if your DPW is doing something that, that, that crosses into the public health arena, the people who touch public health in those departments also will get a questionnaire. Everybody in town that touches public health will respond to the second round questionnaire. The third round is a, is a collection of forms and orders that the Board of Health has issued over the years to see what the actual paperwork is that you're dealing with. That's all going to be submitted to, uh, uh, well, we're being very careful because we're asking the boards to really lay themselves wide open. And that can invite some abuses from the community. And that's something that, that MEHB has been really, really guarding against because we've seen our, our boards of health through COVID get attacked by lots and lots of people from all, all walks of life uh, because of masking and vaccines and things of that sort. And just the inconvenience of having the board of health tell you that you have to do certain things. You keep that business is closed, this business is open, why is that, all of that. So in order to safeguard against that, the data will go from Delshawn's computer it won't ever actually be in her computer. It's a it's a Google form uh, or a Doodle form. One of the you know one of these you fill it out and you press send. So it's not in the municipal computer. It goes to an independent company, a consulting company, uh, that then collects all of the data. Will will do all of the number crunching. There's nothing unless you print it or unless you save it in your computer. There's nothing in a municipal computer to be discovered. So there's no way for the community activists to say, look at the town of Rockland isn't living up to their duties here and there. So uh, so, so the, next, uh, the, the, next, the next phase after they do the number crunching is that uh, they will send back a report for the aggregate group. It won't say Rockland needs this and Hanover needs that and uh, Marshfield isn't meeting their, 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 their duties in this. It's going to say that your group is under-resourced financially in the following areas, and we happen to have $200 million kicking around that we're going to dump into the cities and towns. That's, that's the ARPA funding that we were able to get. When the, ARPA, when the first round of ARPA came out, it went to the cities and towns, and, and actually, m Mr. Manager, how much did you get in your first round of ARPA? Do you know off the top of your head? Um, so, I, I know like the grand total number is probably around like five million. Something uh, okay, like so like between the the any the, the direct funding plus the county funding, all in, it's okay. Probably around five. Okay, so a small town like this attracted a lot of money, five million dollars. The problem is that 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 money, 
and I don't know whether this is true or not in, in, in this town, some towns gave some pittance to the health department, some gave zero to the health department and, and put park benches in and improved the trees and the parks and put crosswalks down. I don't know if, if any of the money filtered down to public health from that first allotment. I mean, well, so you got to remember there was CARES Act before right. that. So CARES Act was a, was a ton going to public health. Yeah. You know, by the time the ARPA funding came, we were sort of through the worst of the pandemic. So we've been targeting more of it toward water and sewer. Right. Most towns did water and sewer. Framingham did. All of it went to water and sewer. Um, and that's what most towns actually did. So recognizing that, we went to the, DP, we, uh, we went to the, to the state legislature and we asked for... $250 million in ARPA funding, and they gave us 200 And out of that, these are rough numbers. Actually, I've got the actual real numbers here somewhere. Um, so out of the ARPA funding... Um, Mike, could you just, excuse me a minute, just tell us what ARPA Okay, ARPA is the, for, is for the, who the American Rescue Something Act. It's, it's, the, it's the funding that came out of... Um, came out of the, 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 uh, out of the COVID funding from the federal government. And um, so what we have is $200 million given over five years to create a mandatory uniform data reporting system in Massachusetts. So more than just who got vaccines and who got sick, it's, gonna, it's going to really talk about all of the data, how many, how, what's your alcoholism rate in your town, what's your drug dependency, how many kids have committed suicide in school, how many kids have attempted suicide in school, how many kids are failing uh, because they have psychological issues, how many parents have abandoned their kids, how many people are living in cars. All of that's going to come out and, and, and be stored at DPH uh, through these, these collections of data. Uh, workforce standards are going to be put in place. There'll be grandfathering, liberal grandfathering for people who are already working, but people who are getting hired in the future will have to have certain trainings uh, that, that within like six months or within three years, whatever the training is, uh, uh, once they take a job. Uh, there'll be more cr cross-jurisdictional sharing like this grant program. Uh, the DEP is, is receiving some of that money to work on groundwater issues, uh, which are becoming huge across Massachusetts. Uh, and then um, uh, it's really going to be a vehicle for, for, for long-term uh, sustainable funding. And out of that, um, the, 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 the actual dollars are 98.85 million dollars uh, will go to data systems and performance tracking uh, and that's to do capacity standards uh, uh, standardized data uh, and uniform performance standards 30 million of that will go to workforce development which will be uh, instead of having to go to Western Massachusetts to do your soil school and, and all of that uh, there's going to be 10 regional training hubs across Massachusetts uh, that will have all of the certifications for all of your health staff um, here within a 30-minute drive, they say, but I don't believe that that's going to really be true because <laughs> in the summertime, 30 minutes takes you just to the next town around here. But um, they say that's, that you, nobody will have to drive more than 30 minutes to get to a training, uh, and they're going to be offering for free all sorts of certification courses. The statute that we that we're pushing through the state legislature mandates that nobody get nobody has to pay for any trainings for public health. You still have to pay for your master's degree and your doctorate and all of that. But for your your standard trainings, you won't have they won't come out of town budgets, uh, and and that can be extremely extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, especially the soil school, I think is hundreds and hundreds of dollars yeah, for each. Yeah, and it's very hard to get into because they don't have many classes. It's a year, a year waiting list, and then once you get through the class, you have to wait a year more to get your test. Okay. So that, that will be done in one spell. You'll, you'll go, you'll go you, you might be a 30-day program, and then at the end of the 30-day program, you'll get your test, and you'll get your certification. Uh, and then there's another $71.15 million for uh, infrastructure for this program and similar programs to create cross-jurisdictional sharing and um, to support local health 
uh, in addressing health disparities. One of the things that you'll see is you're using, Dell, you're using um, uh, paper right now for your inspection forms, is that right? Yes. Okay. You'll have, you'll have uh, iPads and the software will, will be paid for by the state. Every, every, you're going to be brought up. The idea is to ri raise all boats to the same level. There's so many good things about this grant. I know, and you can't really all like just gym it all in. Right, and I'm going to pretty much stop at this point this, because I think I've it, covered the, the high points. It really is, to me, it's going to be so helpful because I will be able to get the training that right. even though that there's inspectors involved, I'm still going to have, be hands-on. Like, I'll still know why or whatever happened at that restaurant. Um, so there's still, there will be communication amongst the inspectors and among and with me. So with that. You well, and I would involved. imagine there'll be that paper trail is, is you know, you'll get that information yes. from our, yeah. we'll have that, those documents. So. Yeah. Um, now, I've actually been very interestingly been approached by a, by a, uh, Come by a guy who will become a vendor if, if, if this works out, who has come up with a system that will put monitors into the refrigerators of all of your restaurants in town. Uh, so if you write up a violation on temperature, on, on holding temperatures, uh, you can, you can the, the program will pay for the equipment and uh, you can leave a thermometer that, that has a sender on it, a sensor and a sender, in the guy's refrigerator, oh and you God, can check it from your brother, desk. That, so you, really? you can, yes. That would annoy me. <laughs> well, but, but you, then, then you'll know if they're complying with your order. Yeah. No, I know. Well, that. Yeah. yeah, I'm just thinking, like, like you know, lying and <coughs> going to bed at night, and then all of a sudden their alarm goes off. Well, that's not your. The, the alarm is up to them, not you. Oh. But, you'll, but you'll find out the yes. following morning you'll, that their alarm went off. You'll know their alarm went off. Right. So I mean, that's how that. But that's how you're on 24/7, Delshawn. That's right. That's right. We she needs a raise. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, Mike, tell him. Yeah. can you just tell me um, what the uh, what towns, if any, have signed on for this program at this point that would be included in our in your group? group. Okay, so uh, as of now, well, I just came out from of those Hanover. Six towns: yes. and, and, and Marshfield, H Hanover, and Norwell have signed. At this and point. Hanson. Yes. And Hanson. Yep. So, so they're Hanover, waiting on Pembroke, and Rockland. Okay. And in fact, I got it was interesting. I got all right, a, so we're the last two. Right. I got a, I got an email this morning from DPH and, and they, they said to me, uh, is, is there anybody in Pembroke, Rockland and, Han, and, and Hanover that you can talk to because they're the only ones that haven't signed in that in that area? And I wrote back, and said, well, I'm going to be in two of those towns today. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's so, right, because you were going yeah, to Hanover. We're right. already behind the due date. I thought we had yeah. till October 1st, No, which is Saturday, and it should have already been it signed. It should have already been signed, yeah, yeah. And, and, and they can't issue checks. They can't issue the contract to Marshfield until we know exactly who's in. And that's, that's and that's, the, and I'm, I don't know if you've seen this or not, but I, okay, so, so I'm going to just hand you this, and I'll hand you both a copy of this, too. This is the only paperwork that the town of Rockland has to do. To, to satisfy the state that you're in it. Yeah, we have to have a signature from from Doug and and, and, uh, you. and you and myself. Right, right. And and th there's two check marks. This these are the two things the state's concerned with. One is that you're going to cooperate. You see the check mark that basically says you're going to cooperate with. In this case, it's Marshfield that that you'll you'll get together. You'll attend the meetings and stuff if they have meetings of the group. Uh, and you'll help you'll you'll help with the governance of it, hiring and, and making the decisions and all of that. <laughs> the second check mark is that you can't you can't say uh, we don't need our nurse anymore because we have a nurse coming through the grant. You can't right. supplant any existing programs or personnel uh, under the grant program. So it protects the it protect. protects the employees it, it, and it it, pr it protects the existing workforce so that they can build over and above the existing workforce. If, if there was a way to supplant it, we'd just be treading water. So, um, and that's it. That's, oh, we that, that's okay. And that's one of the pieces that I'm excited about is social the social worker. worker. Because we okay. really, yeah. we need I a social worker. I know you do. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> 
You can't do it. <laughs> now, just so you know, ju 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 sorry, just, you're just off. so you know, you, you actually. <laughs> no, so she you, could. Uh, you, <laughs> just you, kidding. I'm you kidding. actually came Let's very, very close to, to, to getting this grant before, but uh -huh. what happened was in round three, we had, we had you with a group with Marshfield, and I called Marshfield the morning that, that the grant was due. I wrote the grant. I did all the paperwork, everything was done, and I called Marshfield and said, I haven't seen your, your CC of your email where you've submitted it. And the guy said, oh yeah, let me, let me go do that right now. And then 10 minutes later, he called me back and said, our, our town manager won't do it right now. He wants more information. And we can't do it today. I said, well, you're not going to get the grant if you don't do it by noon. Well, we can't do it. So everybody fell out because of that. Then there was a change of administration in Marshfield. A new health department is in place, and they're, they are gung-ho on this right now. So. Okay. Um, so can you, Mike, just explain a little bit? I think I have a, a fairly good understanding because this is the second time for me, but this is new to Christina sure. and yeah. maybe some other folks in the room, um, is just sort of explain how this process would work. Okay. I know Okay, so the first so thing that happens is, you know, is you, basics. Sign, right, you, sign, you sign that letter, right? And then, uh, then uh, Marshfield will submit all of the letters to Department of Public Health. <laughs> Department of Public Health will come back to them within 14 days with a contract, but it'll really be probably within a week with the contract for them to sign. Uh, and Marshfield then becomes the host agent or the host community. And what happens there is that. Uh, they get a they get a 15% administration fee, which is in this case it's $45,000 a year, which is significant money, uh, and they make the they make the hire technically, but you all choose the employees that they hire. They don't interview, although their health director interviews as one vote of, out of six. Okay, but. And I'm recommending to everybody that they make these hires on a unanimous vote because this is somebody who's going to be working for you. You might want everything else to be simple majority vote, but you want the hires to be unanimous because you all have to work with these people. And uh, so the hire is made. Um, that person, you determine that you're determining the salary and everything else as part of the job posting. Uh, and I'll work with, with, with you guys on all of that. Um, then, um, uh, at the same time, we're working on an intermunicipal agreement. Excuse me, Mike, when you say you'll be working with the board or you'll be working with the health agent? With, with the health agent. Well, oh, okay. I'm going to be working with, with the governing panel. Okay. So if, if your me... board says we don't want you on it, we want to be on it. That's, that's, that's up Have to them. Have at it. <laughs> no, no, no. They're not going to want to do that. I, they I won't. promise you. But, <laughs> but, but you can do it. But that's. Uh, I'll, I'll work with your governing board to get you through that first hire at least. Mm -hmm. MAHB uh, has hired an attorney, an outside attorney. We're, we have a lot of attorneys that work with us, but we hired a, a specialist who specializes in municipal contracts. We've now worked out, who represents your town? For town Cliff council, you're asking? Clifford, Clifford and Kenny. Okay. They've, yeah, they've, they've seen this before because they've been involved in, in, in other towns that have it. Uh, we've been working with this, this, this five or six huge law firms that do a lot of municipal stuff. This KP Law, this Clifford County, this, this, this. You, you, they've seen, they've all seen this at this point. Mm -hmm. But what MHB will do is, is we will propose the, the, the boilerplate to, to your governing group. They'll hammer it out between themselves. Then they'll submit it to your town council for final review. Uh, and we'll we'll do all of the tweaks that town council asks us to do. We've got the attorney that we have any, doing that. Any of that involvement with town council, it's paid through the paid grant. Paid from the grant, right? right. You're not paying. Right. You don't have to pay Clifford and Kenny to do that. It comes out of <coughs> comes out of the grant. Um, you you pay nothing. You absolutely do not pay a penny for anything. It's, everything gets covered by the grant. So then um, the the hires are made. Uh, and your, your shared services coordinator becomes like the general manager for the grant. Uh -huh. And so uh, the sharing arrangements, it's not usually done on if it's, if it's Monday, it must be Rockland. If it's Tuesday, it must be Hanover. That's not the way it works. 
what what will happen is uh, the health agents will all get together and say, I have a lot of low risk food, or I have a lot of high risk food, or I have a lot of housing issues in my, it could be anything that a health inspector does. And one group has, one group that I'm, that I'm working with has hired an inspector to do nothing but housing and go to housing court. Because when, when, as much as she loves going to housing court because she gets to see drunk driving cases and, and traffic cases and, and domestic abuse cases, and finally the clerk will look at her and say, what do you hear on your, oh, a housing thing. All right, well, we'll do the housing thing in a little while. I'm going to go have lunch now. And now, meanwhile, she's given up half her day to sit in the courthouse. Some of the groups are hiring housing inspectors to go sit in court for them. So they, they do the inspection and they, they go through the whole court thing. Uh, others are hiring just for food. Others are hiring for, for everything. Some are doing half inspections and half epidemiology. Uh, some, some of the nurses are being hired to do epidemiology. That's a really good, good combination. Uh -huh. um, those, those decisions, it's completely up to your governing board. We hired a tick biologist. Who's ever heard of hiring a tick biologist? But we did. And they also have an admin that will come in and straighten out our files. Yeah. She'll scan yeah. them and make everything perfect. Right, Digital right. Digital and yeah, that's also... Gonna be, that's going to come out of the opera funding later because they're going to say... Delhi, your office is a mess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 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 but they're going to say that to 351 cities and towns because they're all a mess, uh -huh. especially after COVID. And yes. And and there'll be there's money under that under that um, that first one, which was the data systems and performance tracking, the 98.85 million, which is half the grant, uh, half the half the opera funding, because they know that everything is a mess it's, and everything's going to be standardized. So. It'll all be scanned and everything get cleaned up. So, uh, so then once the hires are made, if, if there's something extraordinary, if, if Rockland is having a affair of some sort, you know, uh, re recently, I guess there was, they did the Special Olympics over in, uh, in, in Hanover last weekend uh -huh. with the equestrian. If they had food trucks and stuff like that, I don't know if they did or not, but that would be something that, that, that if you were having, I think you had mentioned you were doing something with a food cart or food truck or something. Okay, so if you say you had 30 of those, you need, you need inspection help because every one of those that morning has to be looked at when they come into your town. So this inspector would come here and do that over and above whatever else it's doing across the board. So there's, there's low risk food or, or high risk food whatever the risk the food risk is that's no longer on Delhi's plate it's no longer on on uh, Kim Dixon's plate and in, in, in Hanover it's 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 something that the grant is going to take care of across across the territory that's the best sharing model that there is it's not like you have to be here on Mondays or something like right. that right right Doug you had a question Thanks, yeah, I had a couple of questions sure. first thank you for coming in I appreciate everything you're doing this my Sunday. my pleasure um, you've already answered my first question, which was, is there any cost to the town in kind match? Zero, like that? nothing. So you were very clear about that. That's great. Um, the governing board you mentioned, is there one representative per town? It's up to them. It's up to them. Most of the towns have a representative and an alternate, and both of them show up so that the alternate can fill in real quickly. because. Uh, so it's an equal vote, I guess, oh, per town. Yeah, yeah, and and it was. It, it's interesting. There are towns that are talking about doing population base. Right, that's where I'm going. And uh, I will tell you right now, MHB's mm -hmm. position is don't do that. And they listen to me. They do listen to me. Yeah. Right. And it's got to be one one <coughs> vote, one town. Yeah, that's good. And then, if for some reason, which I can't imagine what it was, we felt like it wasn't working for ninety months, days. There, not, not ninety days. Any time. And is it? We can just give notice, or does it yep. have to be like a dual? No, 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 no. You give notice, we're out of here. Right. And it gives them 90 days to figure it out. So my last question is, is there any downside to the town, like in, in, in No, the kind of li liability, liability insurance is, is covered as part of the grant. Um, if there has to be an outside, a, a, an additional liability policy, the contracts or the offer letters that go out to the employees all are very clear that if the grant program disappears, so do they, so there's no unemployment claim that's left over. That was a big problem with the regional and districting. 
that they had was that towns got stuck with employees that they didn't want. And this way, the employee is hired knowing when it's over, you are too. Um, at, and those are the only places that we could think of where there may be any kind of downside for the town, but the grant will pay for any uh, premiums for any kind of additional insurance. But generally speaking, they're an employee of Marshfield, and if they do something in your town, we've, we're going to have to deal with Marshfield's insurance and make sure there's a rider that allows them to go from town to town. And if there is a cost, it comes out of the grant. I mean, it's an, it's a, it's really amazing. Yeah, the, the only downside I could foresee, I could call it that, is it sounds great, and I imagine we're going to benefit greatly from it because we could use all these shared services. But we're at the, and I know you said you're hoping it becomes a permanent part of the state budget. Mm -hmm. But as we know, there's been lots of permanent things in state budgets which they don't adequately fund, and municipalities get hurt by that every year. There's lots right. of examples of that. Right. So my fear is we kind of get hooked on all these great shared services, and then at the whim of the legislature, they can take it away, and then we're kind of stuck. And so it's not a reason not to participate. I think it's a great thing, but relying on the state to fully fund it, they've broken their promise many times with lots of other permanent programs. They sure have. To reimburse cities and towns, there's a lot of unfunded mandates. And so my fear is we, we and every other town have figured out a way to make do with what we have and get the job done. Now we kind of start relying on all this great stuff, which could be taken away at any point. But I'm all in. I've already, I've already signed the form. I'll get to you. This time I've seen it, I did watch the video from one of your other towns. So mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've seen the whole presentation before. But I think it's, from my perspective, not to step on your toes, but I. I I no, I'm appreciative of, yeah. yeah and now, I'll tell you, I thought of that same thing, Doug. Like, that's why I still want to be involved. If there is a, you know, food issue or whatever, I still want to be involved in it. Oh, Even that's, yeah, that, that, that's another and, really good, I'm glad you mentioned your involvement, because what happens is this person is like, I guess the analogy would be, would be like a, a sheriff, that if, if, if you have a, we're in Plymouth County, right? Yeah. So if a Plymouth County sheriff pulls somebody over in this town as opposed to somewhere else, they're going to go to district court here, whatever your district court is here. It's not all one district court for your whole county. It's a superior court for your whole county. But so they're also, the food inspector, when they come into, when they cross the border into, into Rockland and they come from, from Hanover, uh, they are now enforcing your Board of Health regulations, which may be totally different than, than Hanover's. Okay. And I know that, that when, when I was uh, on the board in Framingham, we had a, an incident where a 16-year-old a girl had a, got a tattoo, and her mother saw the tattoo, and it was a rose, and it was up here on her abdomen. And her mother said, let me see that tattoo, 16 years old. Uh, and the mother looked at the tattoo, and I'm not going to tell you where, but you can guess where the stem went right to that was part of the rose. And, you know, and as some guy put this on, on, on a 16-year-old girl, and he was within his rights because the regulation didn't say that there was an 18-year-old minimum. So we passed a health regulation that said 18 years old, minimum age for a tattoo. And um, uh, the tattoo parlor fled to Ashland. And when Ashland, because they had a different regulation. So you have two towns that touch each other that have totally different health regulations. Mm -hmm. And if that were to happen here, they would be enforcing yours here. Just what happened was Ashland matched ours and then the tattoo parlor came back to Framingham <laughs> when, when, when Ashland changed theirs. But that's, you have different, you have some different health regulations mm -hmm. than other towns that touch you. It's just inevitable, 351 and, and cities and to towns. to be honest with you, they're not, they're, we really all network with each other. So we really don't recreate the wheel. We do take other people's regulations and use We them tweak them. And tweak them. Right, right, you know, right. Rockland's behind the times on some of our regulations and now we're updating them. Yeah. And I'm stealing them from other communities. I don't want to recreate the way I, I, I wrote a I wrote a raw milk regulation in Framingham and and because somebody wanted to sell raw milk and our health director was vehemently against it, made me promise him that we were going to vote it down and we voted it up. 
we, we said, yes, you can do it, but here's the regulation you have to live by. And the farmer at first was incensed because he said, you're making me go through things that no one else in the entire United States has a standard that's this tough. And then he called, he called me up about a year later I didn't call me up, I ran into him. He said to me, you did me the biggest favor in the world because everybody in Massachusetts knows that the raw milk at Eastleigh Farms has to go through various things that no one else does. And now everybody travels from all over the state to buy my raw milk because they know they can depend on it. And that raw milk standard is now adopted by the, by the nation. It's the national standard in Canada. Wow. The, I wrote it uh -huh. for a Board of Health. So I mean that's that's how it that's how it works. Yeah. But those inspectors and any any enforcement is your enforcement. That restaurant, even though it's a different face on the inspector than what you're used to seeing, uh, come before your board and present the present what happened at the restaurant. It's a different face presenting it, but it's your regulation mm -hmm. that's going to be. And it's it's kind of like the same thing as your tobacco. Right. You know. And we're, and there's like transparency because you know people. I worked in the town of Rockland, I raised my son in the town of Rockland, and when I go into a food establishment, you would think that like, they're like, everybody gets shocked and they're like, oh my God, here she comes. I think it would give me a better relationship too, where <laughs> there's no favoritisms, right? right. There's, um, but we just had the discussion just now. Cheryl, Cheryl Sabara, who, is in, who, is, who does tobacco for the state, and, mm -hmm. and that's one of our big contracts that I made, she has is tobacco <clears throat> regulation. And Cheryl was with me because we were anticipating something in, in, in Rockland that, thank God, didn't happen. Um, thank God. And, but, Hanover. But I, I, Rock, I mean Hanover. Hanover. And, mm -hmm. but, but the discussion that they had with Cheryl was that they had to write a $1,000 ticket, for a $1,000 fine for somebody at their last meeting, that it was, the sales guy who sold the tobacco to the underage person when he saw the person walking away, realized that kid, that's a kid, that's not, and he said out loud, he said, oh my gosh, how old are you? And the kid just kept walking. And then the tobacco enforcement officer, who you know, she works for you too, went in and wrote the thousand dollar fine. Mm -hmm. And the Board of Health felt bad because the guy who owns the business is- A nice guy. A nice guy <laughs> and a friend of everybody on the board, but it put the board in a position Mm -hmm. where the board could say to that person, when you run into that person in the grocery store, you can say, I feel as bad, well, you paid $1,000, you feel worse than I do, but I feel horrible about the fact that we couldn't do anything for you. So the bottom line there is that it gives you credibility in the neighborhood because you didn't say you have to pay a $1,000 fine. It's the state that says you could have, the, the board could find that there was no violation you know, even though the kid was 16 years old and buying tobacco, there was, you could say there was no violation and, and, the, and not write the, the, or not enforce the fine. But it, sometimes taking that, that choice away from you makes it, and that's, I think, what Delia was just talking mm. about that way. Okay. So. All right. Do you have any questions? That's, that was a lot of information. Thank you. <laughs> Talk too long, huh? My wife would have told me to shut up about an hour ago. Well, so. I, I, where is she now? <laughs> <laughs> really? I can't. And Christine, I, if you have any questions too, I can. Well, it's important that. for the questions to be asked here because we need to decide on whether or not we want to go ahead. Christine, Doug. One thing, found, <laughs> one thing I found interesting about your presentation tonight and the one that I watched online from another community was how you're very clear that it's not regionalization and you're, you know, you're framing it very differently. And that's just interesting to me because it's like <coughs> the R word is really like a bad word, and in my is in my yeah. world, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. There's there's certain parts where it makes more sense, and other areas where it makes less sense. So I think it's interesting, but I understand exactly what you're saying, and to me it just seemed like a no-brainer. I mean, we we've talked in the past about the limitations of staffing in our health department, and I and I I live it because when when Delhi has to close the office, if there aren't other people working at that moment. She has to go up for some other emergency, and then there's nobody manning the office. It's I was here problem. for that. I, yeah, it's a problem, yeah, and it affects other yeah. departments here as well. So um, there's a lot of value here. But I just wanted to make the point that it's, it's interesting. The regional, the regionalization as not being the, the kind of uh, well, the, word because, because it's, well, because regionalization in a public health standpoint implies that you're giving up your ability to regulate. 
to the average of what the other people in your I region want to do. Lots of other services, so, and they talk yeah. about police and fire and everything else. Absolutely, it, it's, absolutely. So that's not a criticism. It's just no, it's an a, observation. But no, it's it's and it's yeah. a it's a it's kind of a cool observation yeah, because so. you think about it. There there are times when regionalization is, in that sense, is the way to go. Right. But so, for example, and this is the last thing I'll say, and then I'll shut up. I promise. <laughs> it's okay. Have, one of our greatest examples of regionalization is we have regional police and fire nine one one dispatch. When you call 911 here, it doesn't go to the fire department or the right. police department. It goes over the whole room. Mm -hmm. And that's great. It's just so much more efficient. We get better service, and it's it's a total win all, yeah. all the way around. Mm -hmm. So yeah. looking forward to well, assuming you guys... Regional school time. systems, too, work yeah. very yeah. well. For sure. So, yeah. Usually. Sometimes it... Well, and the tobacco region is working. Your tobacco region is working beautifully. Amazing. Yeah. Do you have any questions? A lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot on a timeline. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Um, what happens if it's not working for us, which I don't see that happening, and then how do we get out okay. of that? Okay. In, 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 in the intermunicipal agreement, there is a paragraph, paragraph 12, which says that, um, that any city or town participating can give 90 days notice and leave at any time. But that means, too, if you leave, you don't get the ARPA money. Right. Right. But there would be a strong reason why we were leaving, not Exactly. Yeah, yeah, it would yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you want to make sure that clause is in but there. But you can also, you can also mm -hmm. sign and not utilize any of the services. Well, yeah, now, Nantucket is a perfect well, example. I know. N N Nantucket is one city, one town, one county, one island. Okay? And... That, that little island, I had mentioned that Martha's Vineyard has six boards of health, 18 board of health members, blah, 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 blah. Nantucket has a health director, an assistant health director, three full-time inspectors, two part-time inspectors, three full-time nurses, two full-time social workers. That's one island. That's one town, 17,000 people, and they have like a gazillion dollars. And, and, and if they ever don't have a gazillion, they just ask one of their residents they don't call it taxes. They say, will you make a donation? Sure, how many hundreds of thousands of dollars do you need? That's what happens on that society in that island. Yeah. Okay, but, but Nantucket, our inspector, in fact, none of the three have ever been on Nantucket in an official capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, our tick biologist has talked to uh, the health director there about some issues. The social worker is working with the social service agencies by Zoom, but never has been there. The inspector will never inspect on that island because they have so many already. And I asked, I asked Roberto Santa Maria, who is their, who is their, uh, their health director, yesterday in a conversation. I, I said, because we're doing budget for the, for this coming year. I said, does it bother you that you don't get any services at all out of this? You're not taking, and you're the host agency. He said, well, yeah, it's, we we, we got 15 percent, which they've waived. They've given it. They've given it back to the grant. Uh, he, he said, but he said, what what you've done with the grant is you've brought the two islands together. We've never talked. We have we have water between us, and as far as we're concerned, that could be a whole ocean between us. Mm -hmm. These two islands, he said, have ne we've. He said, I never knew the health directors. I've, I knew their names. I've never talked to some of them before in my life, and now I talk to them every week, and we and we deal with a lot of things. He said that was worth the grant to me. So there are towns, there may, be, there may be services in the, well, this town's going to need everything. There's no question. Maybe Hanover might have some things that they don't need, although today I discovered that they absolutely do when I find out that their nurse is doing health inspections. They can't say that they don't need a health inspector when the nurse is doing, is doing restaurant inspections, you know. So, but you, you could say it's a la carte. But the idea is that it's offered that, Delshawn won't have to do any more whatever it is that they decide as a right. group that they don't have to do. Yeah. I just so. want to come back to you, Christina, and see if you have anything else you want to ask about. No. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Everybody else good? Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. The other thing I just want to mention is October 13th, Thursday, October 13th. Yeah. At, I think it's going to be 5.30. You'll get a save the date tomorrow. Okay. Um, uh, we're going to be doing one of our certification programs, certificate programs. Which, Terrific. 
absolutely, if, if you're not doing Whatever something on that can. night, attend it. Uh, Thank you. I've told I've told Deli to, to uh, just we'll, we'll invoice so that after you get the grant, we can you guys the grant will pay for that too. But it's a training program that you'll learn what the 55 things are, how to deal with them. You learn how to run a meeting, uh, how to deal with a with an obstructive uh, member of the community that might come in, how to deal with an obstreperous member of the board. And you might see some familiar video when, <laughs> when, when you see that portion of it. Um, but uh, it's, it's really, it's boot camp, basically, for, for Board of Health members. And, um, and it's nice that they're offering it via Zoom. Yeah, we, well, really we, we, yeah. we did three sessions, and we broke records in every single one of them. We did, we, did, we always do uh, uh, Marlboro, um, Taunton, and someplace in Western Mass. And this year... In Western Mass, we usually get 20 people. This year, we got like 60. I mean, it was just, it was really very popular. Well, the need is there, so that's great. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and and it's it's uh, a great training opportunity. You and you get to really ask any questions that you possibly could have. And as as Deli will tell you, my cell phone is is it always rings from members of boards of health. I'm yours for anything that you need, especially as you're getting used to doing what you're doing right now when you're, while you're still learning it. Any questions you ever have, you just call me. We're there for you. That's what we do. So. Okay, and so I have a big unless for you too, that I'll print out. It's the handbook. I mean, it's a big handbook, but um, I'll print it out for you. I d did I print it out for her? I, mean, I don't know. And, okay. and our legal guide, which is 250 pages long. That, is that the one? That I printed out both. Did you print out the legal guide, really? I think so. Uh, we offer that. Yeah, okay. double-sided, yes. <coughs> you guys Do you have an online free. version? Yes. Yes, there, yeah, it's yes, free on, online. It's free I'll, online. I'll get all that information. Okay. Yeah. There's a yeah. password, yeah. too, okay. that you'll need. All right. Mm -hmm. And I'll get it. Okay. Um, Okay, yep. so if we can just kind of round back, because it's, you know, getting late. So I want to hold just... people up all night long. Right. Um, okay, so I'd like to entertain a motion for to approve the Public Health Excellence Grant. Um, if you're okay with that, I you're am. on board. Yes. All right, <laughs> so you want to just say motion. Uh, to approve. Motion to approve. Okay. And um, I will second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. And I will put my little John Hancock on here. Obviously, we have uh, Doug's approval already. Okay. All right. Very um, good. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm gonna. Thank you, Mike. I'm gonna get out of here. All Skedaddle. Right. You have a safe ride. Skedaddle. Button. Thank you. I will do that. Thank right. you. Thank, thank you, you again for coming. All right. Thank you. I'm gonna. We'll see I'm each other soon. Send that yes, over we will. To, before I leave tonight. Okay. It's signed. Doug signed it. Yes. CC me with it. I will do that. Send, you can send it to Marshfield. Right? Yep. Yeah. Will. Will. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Do you need See anything you. out of my office? I think I did. You got everything. Good. All yes. right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Okay. So next on the agenda, we just have the signature authority. Now, uh, with without Michelle here, I was thinking that we are same going thing. to um, as Michelle isn't going to hear, we're going to table that Perfect. till the next meeting um, because we want to have all three uh, board members present mm -hmm. when we. Um, when we sign that form. And this basically, Christina, just is, is a signature form for, um, for payroll. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm generally the primary, and then we have alternatives. So it would, you know, then it would be Michelle and you as the, as the alternatives mm -hmm. to sign for payroll and warrants if, if need be, okay. um, if I was not able to do so. And um, then the so we will half, wait. Yeah, we'll wait to do that. So the top half, the town accountant's office just needs. Your signature on file, just so I don't forge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, they a need bill to have or your whatever. signature. They just yeah, wanna. That's that. my neither. <laughs> okay, so we are so going to table that yeah. till the next and meeting. And then the animal regulations. That that was just to give you guys time to look at them. 
right? Yeah, yeah. Right. We'll wait. I, I mean, I would like to have all board members present when we go yeah. over those. So you guys um, have the physical. Given those. You'll see the last two pages, the last two pamphlets. <clears throat> um, there's the first two were the old ones, and then the new ones so say draft. Yeah, no, they're in your packet, but yeah, you, um, not to worry because we'll go over we'll go over them as well. But there's keeping of domestic animals, and then application to keep animals or poultry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and these are the full animal regs. So um, the current is only two pages, and then the proposed is like six pages. Yes. Antiquated um, regulations versus what we should be really doing a lot more than correct yeah. um and just uh so that you're aware um ian davidson who is our animal control officer has seen these regulations and has um it, you know is okay with with the way the the regulations are so um but we can invite him to uh the next meeting um to ask any questions if you have anything so just so you are aware of that for for the next meeting we are doing these the next meeting I they are so. getting done <laughs> I <hope so. laughs> because apologies these have taken forever but we keep pushing them along right because other um, things because have other things have yeah. come up that have been very important for us to take yeah. care of the body um, works and the body art that and was the, that was huge and we got it done and now we're delving into that um, um and actually, I think we do need to uh, review the um, going into old business. We need to actually go through the, um, I believe it's the body art. No. Is it? I think we did body works last time. No. So we already have the body art. Was right. Was already, and we have proof of... It, so, so it is in uh, so we're all good with the, that it's yep the regulations are the regulations we have them they were adopted in 2001 i think april 1st 2001 okay they are good all right so we're all set with that mm -hmm. okay because i did want to just go back and, and talk about that i know it's not on the agenda but just to mention it um because no one that was doing. on our uh our um, agenda. agenda from the, from the last meeting that yeah. we were going to talk about this time. So, um, but that's so we're good with those. Um, okay, so animal regulations we talked about. Um, any questions, comments? No. Okay. And the last thing we're going to talk about is the health agent report. Um, I really don't have anything um, pressing to talk about. Um, I just want to remind everybody the rat infestation is still a thing. Um, are we having specific areas nope, that are? It, there is no specific area. It is just running it bad. Um, I just urge all residents to pick up their dog waste, get rid of bird feeders, put your, get your chicken coops off the ground. Um, and button up your holes. I have some literature that I'm going to add to the website on the rats. Um, I, sh I hate saying rats, on the rodent um, issue. I'm also reminding all uh, food establishments, the onus is on them. I've, so Peabody did this big, huge thing where they spent over $140,000 on bait boxes. So they put out 55 bait boxes in high areas. And they were um, electric wave ones that they put out. They, from June to current, it was only 305 rodents that they got. Yeah. Rats are really smart. They are, they are really smart. <coughs> really smart. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, their gestation period is 28 days. And then in two weeks, those babies can have 28 babies. So it's just not, you You have to stay vigilant on it 
or they can and they will overpower. Mm -hmm. And especially if they get into your house, it's going to smell. All residents are urged to get an exterminator. You can't fight this battle on your own. It really needs to, you really need to put the bait boxes out and then change them where they are because again, they are very clever and that's why we have lab rats. Um, we have uh, an abundance of test kits still available. We're gonna be getting, I say 3,000, but Amy thinks it's 9,000, so it could be six. <laughs> Um, the, but is there going to be a wager on that? Yeah. <laughs> Who wins? We'll find out. I'm like, 9,000. But she could be right. But, but we're giving them out, and I'm giving them to departments. Um, COVID has... Oh, COVID. COVID, COVID from tests. rats to oh, test kids. I know, test I'm kids. sorry. Like, yes. kids. I'm sorry. moving along. I'm moving along. <laughs> I'm moving along. Okay. Yeah, sorry. You're right. I didn't okay. distinguish, but... Um, <clears throat> what was scary is I was right there with you. You were. <laughs> I, exactly yeah. I was hoping. Sorry, you'll catch up. Spend a day with me, Christine. <laughs> it's for the people that are watching this. Going, yes, what is she exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so come in again. I'm going to be dropping off boxes to the elderly seat, um, Liege Woods, to Rockland Housing Authority. I'll be dropping off some to Spring Gates. So if anybody needs any come get them. We're giving them out as many as you want. Um, this is going to be a tough time. And this is So we're doing as many as you want at this point? Interlude to my one. No. no. Be, right now she okay. Two. I think that, that works out really well. But they can come up every yeah, day. Yeah, we have to be careful about that. So you can come up every day. So every day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So people can come up every day and get two? Yeah. And in each test, there are two tests. So yeah, they would get a total of four. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe they extended the expiration date yes. through like June or something like yeah. that. A year. They're going to extend them. They're gonna you extend think they'll, them they'll extend them. again? Yeah. Okay. Extend okay. Extend them for year. So, so for just the community to be aware that they have, the state has extended the tests. Yes. Um, expiration dates. Right. And there is a sticker on the boxes that has a code and you can look scan it up it, yeah. as scan to scan uh, when those tests are um, expiring. So, you know, we have a ton of those to to, um, to be given out between now and then. So, um, okay. Any questions about any of that? Okay. Would you please give us a COVID update? I, I mean, as you all know, COVID has been pretty steady through the summer. Um, those that are being tested, remember, only the tests that count through the state are the PCR tests that go through the lab or a antigen, which is a rapid test that um, goes to a doctor or a clinic or something like that. That's the only thing that gets recorded in our town. So when you're doing your test at home, that doesn't get recorded. You don't need to contact us or anything, but it does not get recorded. Um, so we had about a little over 100, June and July, we had 115 in August, and we're probably going to be around that for September. That are positive. That are positive, yeah. Okay. Uh, mostly adults. I've only had a few, I've had a lot of little kids. I've had under five. I noticed. Not a lot of little ones. Um, but that makes sense. If it does mother, make sense. If it's positive, the baby's going to be positive. It makes com you know, right. common sense. Um, well, and I think a lot of the children, you know, are not all of them are getting, you right. know, Exactly right. Some of them are vaccinated, right. so Some of them are. you know, which is. Uh, but you can, as you know, you can <coughs> still get it. It's sure. That it Absolutely. Reduces the symptoms. It reduces. Like, yes. Don't get it six, as adults. Right. Anyways. Um, yeah. So Generally. the big thing was the school system. I know last time Michelle wanted to know what the schools were doing. Um, so last year, as you know, they were testing. They were sending tests home with the kids, so forth and so on. Parents signed uh, consent forms to send them home. This year. Desi only wants, if they're going to test, only test symptomatic children. Um, and if they're going to test in school, they have to have parent consent or whatever. So are they testing in school? Yes, they test in school. If the child's positive, they'll notify me. Um, they, that happened today. So they contacted me, they gave me some information. Um, so that's what's kind of going on in there. If a parent doesn't want them tested, the nurses have so many tests, so you don't need to give any really to the schools. They have tons of them they're going to send tests home with the child. The child's parents test them at home. That's not, they don't have to report it to anyone except for the nurse. Right. So they call the nurse, oh, Billy was positive today. 
the, the nurse doesn't have to report that. She only reports what she tests in her office with parent consent. So that's why, you know, I get an email today that said so-and-so was positive for COVID going back to school on this date. So that's really what they're doing. They're not doing, they, have, they do have um, access to PCR testing. They still have that program in the schools. They don't have to pay for it unless they use it. So as of right now, they have not used it for a very long time, but they still have that access through social hospital. Okay. If we have an outbreak or whatever, we can do that. Okay. But other than that, that's all they're doing. All right. Nothing else going on. So if we get an increase probably the fall, yeah. Well, once everybody starts going, you know, going and around the time. holiday season, yeah. there'll be an increase. I mean, it's going to be like the flu. We're going right. to be seeing, um, we're going to be seeing just like you know, we had an influx last year of the flu. Right. I had, you know, flu is reportable. Just so you all know, it's reportable and it comes through the system, the right. state system. And so I had a lot of flu last year. Um, hmm. I mean, we had way more COVID, but right. we did have a lot of flu, which was I don't really see too much flu. Yeah. You know, one or two, maybe maybe in the school system we might. When I was there, we might have seen, you know, maybe 20. I mean, that's about it. But last year was quite a bit. So mm -hmm. we may see an influx in uh, influence. That. And then just to remind the residents that if they feel symptomatic, do not come to town hall. I will drop off test kits in your mailbox. Okay. It's working out it's great. Nice. Yeah. Wonderful. It's, yeah. It, <clears throat> stay home. You can call us. I can even mail them. Just don't come to the town hall symptomatic. Um, and then don't forget. Sign up, sign up for if you need to get rid of a mattress. It's on October 3rd. The information is on the website. Um, and that's it. Okay. Any questions? No. Anybody have anything else? No, it's a lot of information. It is a lot of information. <laughs> okay. Um, it's our, fun. We it's me with my first meeting. <laughs> it's a lot, I know. You You'll be, be you will be okay. It, it's, it, even Janine said, she was like, you're going to love her. I just, I love people that engage with mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And I think that's, and I know you, I know that I'll get engagement out of you. So I'm excited. Because <coughs> I get it from Christine. Chris. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> she gets it. All right. Uh, motion to adjourn. Okay. I would like to. I would like to entertain a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Let's go back for just one second. I just want to talk about when our next meeting is, which is going to be on October 25th. I'm going to just look at my calendar real quick. Yeah. Calendar. Twenty-sixth. We're going to a conference. October twenty-fifth. At 6 p.m. Okay. Is that, is that, you want to do it? Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, that absolutely. And that's, I just wanted to make sure. So that's we still never good for you. So we talked about the, so the November 29th meeting? Yes. You made it up, I thought. I don't, yeah. So I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. I thought you were going to move that one up. The November meeting in the holiday. December? The I December meeting, any, the December meeting, I believe we're going to take off. Okay. Um, In November, you were going to move. Unless, so. unless um, there's a pressing matter that the board needs to address, um, and we will, we will set a meeting for that. Um, and the 29th. All right, so November 29th meeting. I, I won't be here. Oh, okay, that's what you're referring to, you not being here. Yeah, right. I mean, you guys can hold the meeting. Okay. But I, won't um, be here. I prefer to have the meeting when you are available because you give us the health agent report. Yeah. So are we stuck on Tuesdays? Can no. I, all right. So why don't I throw some dates out that are Monday, Wednesday, yes, and Thursday. Yes. All right. That's fine. I mean, sure, that's the week of yeah. Thanksgiving. <coughs> and if yeah. we're doing that, yeah, then we're not doing it the week of Thanksgiving. How do we alert the community of that? Do it, we? Yeah. Well, we post the agenda for uh -huh. the date. Okay, so great. when the agenda gets posted, then then they will know. All right. 
So on um, on the website, on the town's website, there's this um, little button area wherever it says you click on it, it will say notify me, and you can select which notifications you want. So it will say, do you want notifications from the police, fires, Board of Health, town clerk? It will notify you. So every time I post something on the website, you'll get a notification. Anytime I change anything, you'll get a notification. So it's it's great to have um, because sometimes I rely on that, and then when I can get to the board information, I don't know, but it really is helpful. I, and I urge a lot of people to do that. And I tell people all the time, you can get your trash bills emailed. All you have to do is call me with an email and a phone number. We'd like to try to make it easy on people. I right. know that a lot of people are, you know, don't like the new system, how trash went off on water and sewer by themselves. The trash, different quarters, different meters and whatever, but totally two different utilities. But the trash, I can email it quicker than you could get it. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Um, and the other thing is to just remind people to download the trash app. Oh, you love that it's, trash app. The trash mm -hmm. app is really great. We, I've, I see a lot of correspondents online yeah. asking, um, especially in my community, asking, you know, what's going on with the trash pickup? Is there a change? You know, they can put on there if there's issues with it. So it's great. It so is. please. And it has the cutest icon. It does I have the cutest icon. It has icon. a cute icon. <laughs> <laughs> That's called the He's Trashy. <clears throat> He's trashy? That's oh what my we, gosh. We named him. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, as long as you're on the topic of trash, I have a couple of quick questions, not not to address now, but what I have, one thing I'm questioning, and maybe for a future discussion. Go right ahead. The trash contract that's yes. in place. Yes. Mm -hmm. Was that a that was not bid. That was a no bid. Contract. That. Person. Do you want to? That that's correct. That is correct. Yes. Okay. I, I didn't know. I didn't want to interrupt I'd, you. I'd be interested at some point knowing why. Jack, you can certainly call me anytime. Uh, the other anytime thing that I would time. encourage you to do is mm -hmm. go on um, YouTube and uh -huh. watch the town meeting. That was it was a Zoom meeting. I believe it was March of twenty. Twenty. 20 yeah. was March of 2020. March of 2020. Yeah. Okay. The contracts went in effect fiscal year 21. 21. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so March of 2020. It was a Zoom meeting, um, and we were in, that was when COVID, all the COVID right. was going on and all of that. So it was a Zoom meeting. But you could go ahead on, and I would encourage you to do that because it gave us. Um, there was a lot of financial information that was on that, uh, at, provided at that meeting that um, helped us to have a good understanding about where we were at and what the current um, yeah, normally, contract. Normally, contracts go out to bid. No. Yes, they do. That's or, not correct. I'm well, contracts go out to bid. There's certain things go out to bid for a reason. <coughs> Yes. So I, I'm not sure why this contract did not go to but I, well, I would encourage you to watch the meeting, and well, that, I'll would, call Delhi. that would that um, would answer your question. But you can certainly call Delhi first. Delshawn. Yeah. So I would encourage you to give her a call. But if you have any questions about that, you and could and certainly as far go on as that the meeting. Trash bill being broken out. From, it used to be sent out as three bills at one time, and the trash bill's been broken out. Everybody has the same trash fee, $98? Yes. Per unit. Per unit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's pretty much cast in stone. The, my concern, a lot of people put a lot of effort, there are no people put a lot of effort in getting that, those three bills combined, so they weren't sp spending postage and doing, you know, duplicating effort. 
-huh. And now that, those postage costs have skyrocketed. It's we not, get a deal. It's we not 15 cents postage yet, it's 45 cents. No, I think it's like 32 well, cents. Well, 45 cents was on my envelope. And if I multiply that times 6,000, that's, I don't know if that's your mailing. We don't. No. So but, trash is totally different. Trash, we don't bill for commercial properties. No, I'm just saying just the bills yeah. going out. You're saying the money does. Yeah. I'm saying it, it appears that we're spending now to set, send out a separate trash bill, $10,000 in postage annually, $2,500 so a, a quarter. That was discussed at another meeting, and I can actually get you the dates if you want to have a conversation. I can get you the dates to um, why it was broken up. One of the main reasons that it was broken up was because water and sewer metered accounts, right? Trash is not. So you, if you are being billed for the first quarter from July to um, July 30th, and that's for July, August, and September, the bill for water was for the previous three months. So it was not, right. so we were doing, it was, it just didn't make but sense. The trash is a flat fee. The huh? per, trash, trash is, is a, a flat fee per unit. That's no right. calculations, no meter reading. Exactly. Flat fee, That's right. send out the bill. And then it's we're, a number. So, but so we're also working towards being an enterprise fund. That is our goal. The trash fee is self-supporting, right? So we talked about that in the beginning of this meeting. The trash fees is what pays Republic's contract and the disposal cost. So right. it's so and the disposal cost. You can't help that, you know, now the disposal yeah. cost I, I, back two years ago was thirty six dollars a ton. Now it's ninety eight dollars a yeah. ton. Let's back up. I'm talking postage going up, postage cost. So you're talking about the, the whole bill. bill. The right bill. now we have not yeah. seen an increase on my end. You have to remember, water and sewer build commercial buildings. I was also paying a third of that, even though we were, they weren't getting a trash bill. They were still getting a bill with trash on it, and it said zero. So our cost hasn't increased in the, in the trash, for the trash bills to go out. Well, because we don't send out for the commercial businesses. Okay, so, so we actually send out less bills yeah. than we did prior. Exactly. I'd be, I'd be interested in knowing the, the numbers on that. Yeah, I, and that's what I'm waiting for too when I start to, I'm already seeing the difference between. I, I, I'm just looking at say, what, what have you got five or 6,000 residents in the town, household residents, not commercial. And if you're sending an envelope to them every month, or excuse me, yeah, every quarter. Every quarter, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Then at 45 cents, that's 20, you know, 2500 $3,000 per quarter times four. It yeah, adds up. I know, but that, on a how, is that, how is that? We're not going to get into it here. Okay. Uh, no, you know, we're not. You know, we are not. Yeah. Clarify. Okay. You've had your meeting. I just wanted to mention that. Yes. Somebody motioned to adjourn, I thought. <laughs> So. She did, but then she stopped. That's that's okay. Uh, so so I, yeah, I'm going to entertain a motion to, to adjourn. Second that. Wait, oh. So you want to do the motion. I Motion to adjourn. I motion to adjourn. <laughs> I second. <laughs> and then <coughs> all in favor. All in favor? Uh, Say aye. Uh, yes. All right.